Jayind and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achint. As you all can see, I have with me Major General Harsha Kakkar, an analyst, a vociferous speaker about Pakistan and China issues, especially online, a writer, a thinker, and a strategist. Sir, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon to talk. My about pleasure, Adi. <laughs> thank you, sir, to talk about the very interesting development that uh, you know the Chinese have been arming Pakistanis for a long time now. Talk about the missiles, talk about the nuclear technology, and so on and so forth. And those were the days when the Pakistanis could actually pay for their stuff. What's happening right now is something that I've not been able to put my finger on. That's why I ask you. There is a news before we get on to the J10C altogether. There's a news about the four frigates that have been sold to the Pakistanis. One of them has already been delivered. Three are under work. uh they're supposed to be called carrier killers as per se uh what is the significance of this chinese sale to the pakistanis sir see china has always considered arming pakistan as a means of keeping pressure on india now whatever it gives i mean while it appears to be new one doesn't know what is the quality one doesn't know how much is the technology in terms of the latest the fact is numbers that always counts and you are able to when the moment you start arming pakistan and enhancing the capability of pakistan the indian attention towards china and pakistan gets split right so the impact on the indian defense budget in terms of modernization towards china and towards pak after all our major threat with china is the land border which means basically air and land forces with pakistan it's all free for the chinese navy to venture into our area it's going to take still some time mm. but the fact is we need to start preparing for it now so the moment you start arming pakistan you split our attention you impact our defense expenditure you impact our defense thinking you impact our defense preparedness so that is one of the major reasons why china has always armed pakistan and the reason why their friends is my enemy's enemy is your friend so that that is basically the cause where it is now by giving it four additional frigates it's going to alter the pak capability in the indian ocean what has hurt pak most most of all in recent times is india has been called the next secu- the net security provider and they being absolutely ignored they want to project that they also have the power to move ahead and you know be a sort of a challenge to india the french have turned down their demands for submarines even for even for upgrading the existing structures are they going to go to china is the next issue the fact is adi you may get your weapon systems but to operate them you need an economy if you're going to fly your aircraft and you're going to sail your ships you need oil <clears throat> to purchase oil you need funds when you don't have funds you don't have stocks of oil to take you through a period of operations what good is holding your stock so basically it is a means by which you've been able to project you have the uh, sort of means but can you exploit the means is where the question arises probably in war time yes but on a regular basis to you know provide for security you can only operate in war time provided you practice provided you are exercising in peace absolutely absolutely you cannot absolutely. keep it uh, in a museum in peace time and expect to use it in war absolutely so i think that is that's a very valid point so coming to the j10cs now you know the interior minister of pakistan was very proud to put it across by his jahaz fly past karenge jo hamare hain that dialogue went reverberating across indian media and pakistani media for the next about 48 hours till it died down again uh you know the chinese uh, came up with this fighter somewhere around the 70s or the 80s is not a very latest design it's uh, supposed to be a copy of the israeli kafir which you know the israelis have also gone ahead and taken off their uh, uh, yeah 
it's a this thing and it's supposed to be in capability an earlier version of an F16 so what sense does that make for the pakistanis one to acquire something like that and two for the chinese to actually give the pakistanis probably one of their only fighter jets that they can actually sell today uh if i may uh, take just a moment more so because the chinese jets have been using russian engines and the russians don't allow the chinese to sell uh jets which have the russian engines without their permission to the countries that the chinese would like to so what's this whole game that is coming out here see the question that's it's simple basically the fact is spark can't afford anything better f16s or anything else is way beyond its funding it only got those at that time because the us was giving it grants now the grants have gone so with the grants having gone how do you fund you don't have the money you can't purchase rafale you can't purchase euro fighter you can go nowhere else who do you turn to the chinese what's the reliability of chinese aircraft if you buy their commercial ask bangladesh ask nepal and bangladesh they'll tell you the condition of their commercial Nepal has got all of them grounded. Okay, what is the reliability of the J of the J10 series? I don't know. I, the reports that I have been reading is fairly poor, and the Chinese are unwilling to provide you after sales service. In fact, Indian Indian private companies give you better after sales service on your products that you buy than the Chinese would give it to the Pakis. In terms of the uh, sort of, in, in terms of what they provide. but for a for a common pakistani additional aircraft coming in from china being projected in the media as the best that the chinese offer genuine pak commentators their strategic analysts in their writings have openly stated that this is not an aircraft worth procuring but the fact is that the government is not concerned for them it is projecting that we are getting additional aircraft which is and they're comparing it to the rafale which is a big joke that's going around but that's the way they've been able to do it right and now if you're trying to say that it is equivalent to the rafale and it will change the entire scenario the only thing that it will do is it will make up for the numbers that you've lost over the last few years because and the fact that you can't fly f16s against india so you have only got a limited number of aircraft so it will give a boost to the aircraft that's all that it's going to do that is quite a interesting uh, observation that you've made sir. and but my question is you know if you look at the average cost of this particular aircraft it's about 44 million dollars or something like that um so for these 25 aircraft they've probably paid a billion which is something that they are crying for you know from the imf Uh, see the cost the cost that you're coming across is what china gives it to others giving it to pakistan suits china because of india whether they giving it at what rate is a different issue as it is pakistan is sold out to china so whatever china is placing there is is its own in its own country it's only a difference in province that's the only difference but the fact is that i doubt that they're going to give it to them on the same rate at which they're selling elsewhere because pakistan can't afford to procure it the four frigates in this it will mean the next 10 years of pakistan's uh, complete gdp or its complete budget it can't afford it very clear so the fact is it will be either at a major discount or it might be like the way india has bought the mothballed aircraft uh, which we bought the mirage uh, 2000 mothballed aircraft to basically make up for our spares it would be something on that line it served to uh, sold to them at a fairly discounted rate but that is what it appears to be because of pakistan to afford this amount of money when they when they actually sinking economically is not logical so what you trying to say is that they might be giving them their old used aircraft which are probably somewhere half life or even beyond that uh, for the pakistan at a discounted rate of uh, basically the reason is what the reason is to impact india hmm. pakistan they are aware that india has no intention of taking over pakistan there is no intention so what are you looking at doing you're looking at dividing india india's attention impacting india's defense planning by enhancing the threat from the other side 
So looking and at for that, ha. Huh. Sorry, please answer. Nee, nee, go ahead. I'm just I'm, looking I'm at just it from a huh. Chinese perspective, sir. You know what are they getting out of this? They they putting money into a place which is actually sinking. As an investment, what person, they're getting, what they're getting is India's. Is it, it, now India's India's concern. You're adding on to India's concern. So now, when India looks at, why do you think when we looked at the first S four hundred, when did we deploy it? Mm, between both of them, yes, sir. Right. What is the intention? They know that you know keep India concerned from the Pak side. Automatically, your interest is now both sides. The fact of a two-front war gets, you know, I mean, after all, the other side is getting capable. They but do. We also them. know that. But we also know that to fight, you need oil and you need other resources which you don't have. So you may hold what you want, but you need to operate them because the first thing that's going to happen is going to be your, uh, uh, I mean, the oil supply is going to stop. And how much oil have you got? You don't even have three days oil stock in Pakistan at any one time. The day oil doesn't come, the oil tankers go dry. That brings me to my next question, sir. How do they help out Pakistan in actually operating these damn systems? You can give it to someone, as you mentioned in the first thing. You can put it in the museum as a piece, fly it on a fly pass sometime, make Sheikh Rashid give some dialogues about it. But beyond that, would the Chinese be able to? Uh, integrate the, the Pakistan fund Pakistan. beyond that. No, no, that is not the Chinese job. The aim is simple: send the message. Send the message. It is not going to be that they are going to come and operate in uh, Pakistan. So that's what they've done. So they've given a, it to them. Send the message for a seasoned military like the Chinese, as they call themselves. I don't think so. But anyways, that's a whole different discussion altogether. They must know that uh, you know giving in a system and integrating a system into a battle plan, and that takes years. See, uh, as far as they are concerned, the, the the current set of aircraft that Park is using is also Chinese. Yes, the JF seven, which the which Park is using, is Chinese. You've got an upgraded version, right? That is all that you've got. So what you're doing is you're enhancing this and you're pushing the F-16s back because you can't use the F-16s on the Indian front. Mm -hmm. So that is basically what you're going to do. So as far as that is concerned, it will not be a major issue in terms of integrating the same. That is not the response, Chinese. The question that's going to come is: it's not the aircraft alone. If you look at the cost. It is not purchasing. The purchasing cost is about maybe I would say one third or one fourth. Mm. It is your maintenance cost, your armament cost, manpower, which is the highest. Now that is that is spread over years. So as far as that is concerned, but the best thing for a nation like China is to provide Pakistan with the aircraft and charge them for everything else. <laughs> for maintenance, for armaments, for everything else. Now, in twenty years, they have not only made up made up the cost of the aircraft; they have doubled or tripled the cost of the aircraft. After every few hours, the aircrafts have to undergo overhaul, and Chinese products are Chinese products. Now, that is a major costly part, which is why when you sign a defense deal for aircraft, you don't look at the aircraft per se; you look at the uh, The maintenance of the aircraft all through its service period, which is what you signed with Rafal. Absolutely, Now that sir. is a factor which Pakistan would have definitely looked at, and that is something where the Chinese are going to fleece them on. If they can charge them eleven million dollars for the Dasu killed engineers, they'll fleece them out on the maintenance of the JF twenty two, or it'll become a museum piece. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just couldn't help myself laughing, sir. But my question is, I mean, with a sinking economy, with a sinking this thing, forget Imran Khan. I am sure that the army is a little more smarter than that. But having said that, I'm also going to contradict myself by taking a decision like the like putting Imran Khan on the seat. I sometimes doubt myself when I say that. What do you think, sir? They wanted a puppet. They got a puppet. When they say "bak," it's done. So they got what they wanted. 
he may do a little bit of drama here and there when it came down to the extension of bajwa but that's it he had no choice when the courts pulled him it pulled him up he found a solution in no time the court said pass it in the uh, senate he had it passed in the senate he just does a little bit of drama here and there but there's nothing which he does which which will in any way question the isi chief well he did try and you know push it in because he was concerned of his own future but when it came but when the push came he just relented that's it any back down now just look at the fact of 48 hours ago pak newspaper dawn gives an article the chinese ambassador to pakistan met general bajwa and discussed imran khan's forthcoming visit imran khan is visiting you're not meeting the foreign minister you're meeting bajwa so who are you meeting you're meeting the master because the puppet has to go and for that also very interesting statement came out of shah mahmood qureshi's mouth that wo to milta hi nahi hai kisi se <laughs> that is probably going to go down in history books as the biggest diplomatic faux pas that the pakistanis have uh... that was about winnie the pooh <laughs> <laughs> sir coming back to the ground of arming pakistan now uh, the biggest question you answered why are they doing it have the pakistanis actually committed i mean in your mind to give something to the chinese because that's a big question which is being asked in the pakistani media ki aapne diya kya hai inko see you already made unofficial commitments uh, commitments in terms of the uh, islands of karachi it was stalled because the sindhis raised up in revolt there are strong rumors about resources in baluchistan and gilgit baltistan possibly first maybe gilgit baltistan and then baluchistan going into the chinese okay then whatever the chinese want after all your foreign policy today is dictated by the chinese they wanted imran khan to be there as a puppet in the winter olympics opening ceremony he is there they did not want him to attend the democracy summit he is not attended they wanted him to criticize the democracy summit he's done that whatever they want pak to do so they're getting it done for chinese it doesn't cost much after all the labor is chinese the stores are chinese the companies operating are chinese so the money from china goes back to china it doesn't even touch pakistan but the bills land up in pakistan and the roads that you're constructing are of no use but to the chinese because it's only their vehicles that are moving there are lots of local pakistanis who who stated that the roads have been built but we can't use them so what is it that you're doing so basically what you've created is for your own benefits and you got the whole nation at your beck and call and there is not a word on uyghurs there's not a word on xinjiang there's not a word anywhere criticizing why in spite of the fact that you cry on kashmir every day you cry in palestine every day you don't open your mouth here why because the chinese are sitting there with the purse strings so you've got everything that you want and what are you giving them who said you're giving them new stuff that's true sir coming to my last question sir you know uh, the chinese would want pakistan to become a loyal dog sort of a thing to sit when it commands stand when it commands speak when it commands and action when it commands and till now probably the pakistanis have been playing along and the, they've been able to sell it to the public as well um public at large and the so called influential diaspora within pakistan but today we see that that same influential diaspora is now going against the chinese for how long will the pakistanis be able to keep their public in control with regards to the china relationship you see what's happening anywhere anywhere wherever china has gone in initially it tries and you know projects itself as having come in to help the nation slowly the pictures emerge in pakistan the scenario is different the amount of funds that they pumped in pakistan can't back out it has to repay the more it blocks 
it doesn't cost the chinese a penny they say you're not letting us work the bills are going to mount ultimately they have to repay how do they repay from where do they get to repay nobody is willing to support them you can take it from the imf some amount of figures but at some stage again you've got to repay whether you're taking it even from saudis you've got to repay unless you develop yourself i mean like india was also in a financial drain in the early 90s when we opened the economy but what we took we used to change the nation's economic scenario that's something they have not done which is where they go to sink further and with the bargain that the chinese are literally going to be controlling the nation and they just going to be puppets of the nation because ultimately they got to repay and you keep twisting the tail you keep extending the loans where you don't extend the country is running around to beg and borrow and who's going to come to the aid saudis are not india is now today supporting the maldives india is now funding sri lanka india is not going to fund pak until it changes and possibly for all you know in the long term it may be forced to change i heard that somewhere that we should call him ran khan and say what is your debt give it to him and be done with it i think <laughs> give your nuclear weapons here give your all the systems here here's your money get out never look at it india again a lot of people are you know commenting on that with the kind of foreign reserves that we are sitting in today so the jokes apart thank you so much this has been a you know very interesting discussion with you with regards arming pakistan and it always is a wonder that why would china look at supporting a country which no one else in the world wants to support um it probably has and i'm going to just say this this is my personal opinion you may disagree with me but a narrow opinion of uh, countering india and it's you know dividing india's attention but uh, i personally feel that they are trying to feed a rabbit dog which is going to bite them one day and that day to my mind is going to be very very close by thank you sir for joining me uh, at dev talks till next time for another discussion jai hind jai hind take care adi bye 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 sir